Good morning, church. So glad that you can join us again this morning. And I just hope you've had a great week, that the Lord has been walking with you, that you've been encouraged. And boy, do we need the, the encouragement of the Holy Spirit. And that's what we're going to pray for this morning. Glad that you could join us for the pre-service prayer. I'd like to start by reading from Acts chapter 9, verse 31. And it's when the early church, uh, the Holy Spirit was helping them. And it says, Then the church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria enjoyed a time of peace and was strengthened. Living in the fear of the Lord and encouraged by the Holy Spirit, it increased in numbers. Isn't that a great passage? It gives us encouragement to know that when we live in the, the refuge of God, that we can be at peace. Not only that, but we can be strengthened. If we walk in the fear of the Lord and have the encouragement of the Holy Spirit, we can actually grow through this time, this season that we're, we're going through together. So this morning, let's pray. Let's pray that there'll be change, there'll be transformation, that our hearts will be changed by the, the word that is preached this morning. Not only for the members that are joining us, but also in the homes. Uh, pray for the families. And so over the next five minutes, let's just bow our heads as families, if you're by yourself, that's okay. Let's pray together.
Welcome to VIC, Victory International Church. So glad that you made it and you decided to join us this morning. It's amazing, isn't it, that we're now in our fifth online service. And we just want to thank God for the, the faithful support of our social media team to get this to air each week. And I think you know, God is really using this platform for good in Singapore and beyond because we're hearing from friends and people we don't even know from overseas. And we just pray that it's encouraging them individually and, and their families. There are some other really good things happening in our church. And I want you to know that we started uh, Men's Fellowship online this week. And we had some new members that attended. So if you're interested, you know, please drop us a line. And also our connect groups are meeting regularly. And not just like every Friday, but we're meeting also during the week virtually. Isn't that great? Praise God for what he is doing in our lives to keep in touch, to keep connected through prayer and through fellowship. And praise God for the testimonies that we're hearing through these series, We Are The Church. It's so good and so encouraging to hear how God is moving in your lives and how we can remain connected during this time. But there's a lot more that we can do to support each other because the Lord is really calling us to prayer in this season. In Colossians it says, to devote ourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. So let's also remember to pray for our nation to pray for our church leaders and for our connect group members. We can be proactive in prayer, connecting on webcam, maybe one-on-one, -on -one, or we can get involved in prayer meetings with our connect groups. Also pray for our families, for peace at home, unity in our homes, developing better relationships with each other and with God. This morning, our church is live on YouTube. So join in on the chat. Say hi. Wherever you're coming from, if you're overseas, let us know. If you're a regular, let us know that you're online. Say hi, share a word of testimony, or a request for prayer. We'd love to hear from you. And also so that we can continue to worship in our giving and tithes and offerings. You'll find a link at the YouTube description of this broadcast. Just go to that and uh, it'll take you to the vfc.org give website. Then the final announcement is just to remind the kids. They have so much fun on Sunday afternoons with VFC Kids, and then they have their own program, VIC Kids at three o'clock. So don't forget to click on the link that will take you to that information as well. God is with us. That's amazing. Let me say it again, God is with us. We may be feeling isolated. We may be feeling alone. But let's remember that Jesus is with us. When he went up to heaven, he sent the Holy Spirit to us, to be with us. And earlier we read from Acts 9, chapter 31, and it says that in the early church, they enjoyed a time of peace and they were strengthened. They lived in the fear of the Lord and encouraged by the Holy Spirit. We've been called to a deeper relationship with him. He wants to have relationship with you. He wants to help and protect you. And he wants you to, he wants, he wants to be with you through rough storms now and ahead. Let's worship together. Good morning, everyone. 
Welcome to Victory International Church. We want to worship together this morning, wherever you are, in your home, here in our home. It doesn't matter because God is here. God is everywhere. And we worship a risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Only He is able to break the power of sin and darkness, to bring order back into our chaos. Because He is the King of glory. He is the King above all kings. risen 
Christ. We just want to give back to you our praise. Now my life belongs to you. Be 
Today we're going to read from Luke chapter 8, verse 22 to 25. One day Jesus said to his disciples, let's go over to the other side of the lake. So they got into a boat and set out. As they sailed, he fell asleep. A, s a storm came down on the lake so that the boat was being swamped, and they were in great danger. The disciples went and woke him, saying, Master, Master, we're going to drown. He got up and rebuked the wind and the raging waters. The storm subsided, and all was calm. Where's your faith? He asked his disciples in fear and amazement. They ask one another, who is this? He commands even the wind and the water to obey him. Wow, that was a powerful word of God. I want to say welcome, every one of you. Welcome, Victory International Church, one more Sunday in God's presence. Remember, we are here for Jesus. He is the only one, the only reason that every Sunday, that every day and every morning, we woke up with the full desire in our heart to worship Him. But this time together, from different homes in Singapore, different places around the world, we are here for Him. Let's continue going through the Bible. We started with the book of Luke chapter 8. Let me go verse by verse with you. What happened? You know the context. The disciples went with Jesus to the other side of the lake. But in the process, something happened. A big storm came trying to, wow, take out the peace of their heart. Let me go verse by verse. Verse 22. One day, Jesus said to his disciples, I emphasize the word Jesus because many times we forget who is in control of our lives. The Bible says, Jesus said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side of the land. Jesus told them, Jesus said them, let us, you and me, go over to the other side of the land. So they got into a boat and set out. Who said this? Jesus. Then he promised to the disciples that they will go together with him to the other side. They need to believe that it's going to happen. Sometimes in our life is the same. We forgot who is inviting us, who invited us to walk together by faith. Jesus is the one who called you to be his disciples. Verse 23, as the disciples sailed, Jesus fell asleep. Have you ever felt like sometimes Jesus the Savior was sleeping when, while the storm in your life was on? some challenge, some problems that you are facing, looks like, come on, where is Jesus? It looks like he's so silent, so quiet. Because when we face troubles, is the place that our faith is tested. There will always be times, remember, when we will not feel like God is so near, so close to us, but it doesn't mean that it is no with us. It's always in those times, remember, it's in those times that when we cannot feel God's presence, that we need to trust in Him. We need to trust in Him. Wherever the circumstances is around us, in front of us, we need to trust in Him. 
God wants that you and me, we can trust in Him no matter what. He wants us, we can relay in Him. Cry out to Him. But let me go through. Verse 23 says, As, as the disciples sailed, Jesus fell asleep. A squall came down on the lake. A squall came down on the lake so that the boat was being swamped and they were in great danger. This was the challenge that, that those disciples was experiencing that night. A squall came down on the lake. The boat was being swamped and they were in great danger. The Bible didn't say that they died. They were in great danger. Their life was in risk. I want to see, together with you, how was their reaction of these disciples? The disciples faced great dangers, true. The storm, I believe, was unexpected and was also severe. What is the source of the storm? Do you remember sometimes before we see the source of the storm, something happened with us while well, everything is going well, something changed our life. Many of you probably remember last December, the last day, making our new goal for 2020. Who can imagine the 2020 will change drastically in the way that we are living now? We were not expected to stay in a lockdown, but we are adjusting at this new lifestyle, but believing that we will overcome. Let me tell you how. What was the source of that storm? Sometimes different storms have different sources. Sometimes it's just our own fault. Because, for example, we just get us into trouble. We need really to pay the price or the consequence of what we are doing wrong. You, you know, I know also this. But sometimes God sends some kind of storms to bring us closer to Him, draw us closer to Him, to teach us to trust Him more deeply. But sometimes there is also some storms are satanic in origin. The enemy will try to drive you out, away from God's presence. Don't let uh, the enemy to do this because we know, remember, who is the enemy. He wants all of us. We can really run out from God's presence. We are not to do this. Uh, verse 24. What happened after this circumstance, this challenge, this, this furious storm? The disciples went and walked him, saying, Master, Master, we are going to drown. The disciples, they really did something well, something right. They ran to Jesus. <laughs> they ran to Jesus, the only one who can save their lives. Because remember, many of them, they were fishermen. They know already how to face this kind of challenge, this kind of storms. But this storm was very particular, aggressive. They didn't know how to control. I believe the greatest storm that night was not necessary on the Sea of Galilee. I believe the greatest storm was in the heart of the disciples. There's a storm of doubt. A storm of doubt. They were terrified. They almost lost their hope. All their hope, how are we going to survive? They ran to Jesus. They said, Master, we are going to drown. We are going to, to die here. Save us. Let me tell you something, fear and faith cannot occupy the same space. Fear says, for example, this situation in my life is too much, too difficult, too big to handle. But faith says, God is in control. He will take over this problem. When fear says, I'm not sure if God is strong enough to, to, to help me, to give me a victory. Faith says, nothing is more powerful than God. The disciples, they were looking at the circumstances. 
The wave is so big, the wind was so strong, they are almost going to die. They were focusing in what was in front of their eyes. But thanks God, they remember one thing, Jesus was in the same boat of them. Jesus, let me tell you, Jesus didn't save you to abandon you. That's not true. That's a lie of the enemy. He wants to commit himself with you. He will never forsake you. When different kinds of storms, difficulties, challenges, problems, uh, you are facing every day, just remember, run to Jesus. He will hold you up. He will never forget you. The disciples, they did something right. They ran to Jesus. And we need to do the same. We need to learn from the disciples. Jesus got up. What he did? He rebuked the wind and the, he rebuked the raging waters. The Bible says that there is power in the name of Jesus. For the reason is I run to Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Jesus has authority. He rebuked the wind. He rebuked the waters. His name is greater than anything. There is power. Remember this. There is power in the name of Jesus. After that, after Jesus rebuked the storm, the Bible says the storm subsided and all was calm all was calm jesus promised something he promised to stay in the same boat with you he promised this he promises this many verses like uh, hebrews 13 5 for example he said i will never leave I will never forsake you. Oh, Genesis 28, 15 said, I am with you. I will watch over you wherever you go. One more, one more verse. Joshua 1, 5. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I have a two more verses that I really enjoy. Isaiah 41, verse 10, said, Do not fear. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will straighten you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. Isaiah 43, also at the same time. When you pass through waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. God is with you. Matthew 28, 26, Surely I am with you always. To the very end of the age. Verse 25. Jesus said after he rebuked. He rebuked eh, the wind. He rebuked the waters. He addressed to his disciples. He said where is your faith? Where is your faith? Jesus asked this to his disciples. But just check something more. Jesus didn't tell that they do not have faith. No, he just asked, where is your faith? In other words, where are you focusing now? Where are you looking, looking for? What are you looking for? I am here. Sometimes we just forget that Jesus is with us. The same question Jesus is asking us today, to you and me, where is your faith? In the midst of this situation, in this pandemic system that we are facing in the war, looks like the number of cases in fact never stop. We see like uh, there is no hope. That's not true. We need to understand. 
where is your faith? What are you facing now? What kind of challenge or problem you are facing? Jesus asking you, where is your faith? Are you going to give up for this? No, just focus in Christ. Is your faith in what you can do? No, don't do this. Is your faith in the lies that Jesus doesn't care of you? That's not true. This is not coming from God. If you rely on Jesus, He, Jesus, He will calm the trouble storm of your life. When you face, next time when you face another storm, you will be able to remember, because you know already, that you will have someone on board with you. Someone that, that he can care of the winds, of the problems, of the storm in your life. If your faith is not in Jesus Christ, then the storms of, their, of your life are going to sink you. Don't let the enemy celebrate any kind of victory over you. No, we belong to Christ. He is in the boat of our life. He is controlling. He is the one who tells us, come with me. Let's go over to the other side of the lake. The disciples, they saw Jesus performing many kinds of signs and wonders. Why they didn't trust him in this moment? Let me tell you, if you are facing very strong problem now, maybe it's time to show how strong is your faith, how real you trust in Jesus. Because he has authority to release his word to say, to rebuke the problem, the challenge that you are facing. To rebuke this, this virus that is killing people. Because there is power in his name. We need to run to Jesus. We need to cry out to him. We need to believe that he can do it. He will do it. Many times we saw the same in the Bible. We read the Bible. We know what Jesus was doing. What he is doing. What we continue doing. Because he is the same. We, we heard testimony of other people sharing about this. We, you saw also in your own life how God changed you, how God rescued you, how God delivered you from different kinds of situations. But in moments like now, it's time to remember that He is in control of my life. He has power in His Word to release a new, fresh Word over you. The storm increase the, their faith of the disciples. The storm that you are facing, that you are, yeah, we are facing now, must also increase your faith in Jesus Christ. Even you cannot see Jesus, even you must, you must, we must be able to trust in Him, to believe in Him, that He is in control of our lives. We need to understand who control every situation. The disciples were in fear and amazement. And they asked one another, who is this? Who is this? He commands even the winds and the water. And they obey him. This is something that we also need to ask ourselves. You need to invite others when they see how great is our, our God. Who is this? He is the one. He has power in his word. Jesus has power over all nature, over all sicknesses, over all evil spirits, even over death. But guess who chose to disobey Jesus? You and me. Many times... We know that He has, His plans are better than us. In many times we choose our own plan. His word is showing us, but this way, in many times, we are still decided to go by our own. Don't do this. Jesus knows that He has the power, but we need to know that He is powerful also in our life. 
The disciples, they learned about the power of Jesus. They also learned about the promises of Jesus, that he will ever be with them. I want to tell you, Jesus will be with you day and night, but you need to abide in him at the same time. They learned also that he is with us, with them, that his presence is real with them. His presence is real with us in our midst. Let me tell you, you don't know what to do. Cry out to God, run to Jesus. He is there with you, even you don't know is there. The Bible tells us, if we are gathered together in his presence, he is with us. Now he is with you in, in your home. He is with us, walking together. Let the storm that you are facing, let the storm lead you to Jesus. Don't let the storm give you away, far away from Jesus. No, let the storm lead you to Jesus. He said, we are going together to the other side of the lake. Don't just seek uh, isolated experience with God. I want to ask you, seek Him above all else. Seek His presence every day with all your heart. Did you notice that Jesus is able to stop the nature just for you? If we cry out to Him, He will do it. God can stop a storm for you. We need to learn to cry out to Him. The presence of Jesus in the boat of your life. Listen to me. The presence of Jesus in the boat of your life, it doesn't mean that you will not experience storms. What it really means is that your boat will not sink. You will experience victory. You will prevail because He is with you. He can release you from every situation that you are facing. He can deliver you. He can set you free. He is here with us. Let's do the same thing that the disciples did. They ran to Jesus. They experienced by themselves that Jesus has power to take care of them. Jesus has a promise. He, has, he Jesus promised them to be with them. They experienced. They will, he will be with them. I want you also to experience the same. Today, in this Sunday, I want to invite you for two particular things. Run to Jesus. Run now to Jesus. He is here for you. You say, how? Just cry out to him. Just tell him, Jesus, I need you. The situation that I'm facing now, I cannot handle more. I need you, but I need you as my Lord, as my Savior. Can you tell Jesus today that you really need him? He's the only one able to take control of your life, much better than you are doing. Can you pray with me? I want to invite you, wherever you are, just open your heart. Just tell Jesus, Jesus, I need you. I know that I, I was walking by my own, but today I understood and I cannot continue walking in my life if you are not with me. If your presence is not in the boat of my life, I don't want to go any single matter more. Jesus, come to my life. Today, Jesus, you say with me, I receive you in my heart as my Lord, as my Savior. I confess that without you, I cannot do anything. I confess that I, I am a sinner, but I need you. Come, Jesus, come to my life. I receive you today as my Lord, as my Savior. I confess you that you are the only one who rule my life. 
starting today. If you do this, you will experience a new beginning in your life. Jesus is coming to you to start a new life together, this time together. Let me also pray for every one of you in your homes. Do you know for what? All of us, if we see our circumstances, we are not sure what's about tomorrow. But today, by the Bible, by the Word of God, we understand something. If we run out to cry, we will know Him better. We will experience that He is faithful, that He is with us. I ask Jesus today that He can stay with us. Let me pray for you. Jesus, I want to declare today that every one of us, that we are listening your word, your message, we can be able to open our hearts to understand that we need you. Today we are running to you, Jesus. We are crying out to you, telling you, Jesus, come to our life, take control, because without you, the life, the boat of our life is sinking. But with you, we know that we will be able to cross over until the other side of the lake. Today, we remember that we have faith in you, but we were focusing in other things. We are focusing in the circumstances, in the darkness. Now today, we want to focus in you, Jesus, only in you. Yes, starting today, let us to live according to you. I ask the presence of the Holy Spirit filling your life, filling your home, wherever you are, receive the presence of the Holy Spirit. Receive the peace to understand that there is no more storm. God already rebuke, already rebuke the storm of your life. Experience His peace now. Let's worship together. Jesus, we need you now more than ever. So come, fill us as we pause in this moment before your throne of grace and worship you.
Let's pray. Lord, I need you. I need you at this time. Come Holy Spirit, come to comfort me, come to encourage me, to bring me peace at this time. Lord, protect my family, wherever they are around the world. And Lord, help our church to grow. Even in this season, we pray in the name of Jesus. Thanks so much for joining us today. We hope you've been really encouraged and really blessed from the word that's been spoken. And, and again, the, the live stream will remain open for the next 10 minutes. So please stay in fellowship with us. I'd just like to leave a benediction over you right now. And it's taken from Romans chapter 15. Now may the God of hope Fill you with all joy and peace as you believe in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. God bless you.